hey guys so today we're going to start with a new chapter uh, it's called acids bases and salts that's a third chapter in chemistry 10th right so uh, previously you have studied a little bit about acids and bases so you'll in think class 7 you'll have something about uh, acids have a strong odor or you know how they taste and certain ways to identify acids so today we'll be uh, looking at uh, something like this there are a lot of definitions to acids however we don't really need to study all of them uh, for today we will be focusing on how do i know that i am looking at an acid or looking at a base so we will be doing that with the help of an activity to help us understand better so here i have two samples with me in these two glass containers so i have a beaker and i have a conical flask both of them contain a liquid so if you see they are two colorless liquids they look identical i really can't tell what is what it, it can be it can be water it cannot be can be acid it can be base so most acids and bases look too similar for us to be able to see and tell the difference and if you think about smelling the acid or tasting the acids or touching soapy touch all of those identifiers are a little risky this is the reason why i'm wearing gloves right i can't touch the acid to just figure out what it is i'm going to lose my finger right so we need to find a sensible way to identify what's an acid and what is a base so today we will be looking at that okay we will be looking at identifiers for acids and bases so we'll be able to figure out what's in each of these beakers okay so to start us off i will use this first solution that i have here okay and i will pour some of it in this watch glass it's a little dish okay now uh, i will pour it here a little bit of it just for testing okay i need to be very careful with this right so i'm not sure you can see it but there is some all right now i need to figure out is this an acid or a base okay to help me with this there is something called as an indicator so to indicate means to show something the simplest indicator that we have is litmus paper so litmus paper is of two types red litmus and blue litmus okay so uh, i will use both of these papers to test whatever is there in that watch glass okay first i'll start with red litmus so litmus is a derivative of a plant it's not really necessary for you to know but i'm just saying it okay it's called a lichen plant and so i'm going to dip this paper in this liquid i am now this was my paper originally it's red if you can see it and this one is still red after it touched the liquid okay so i will put this aside for now and i will take a blue paper okay a blue litmus paper right now these papers have certain function of changing their color once they touch a certain type of chemical okay so for the sake of comparison i'll tear it in half just so we are able to compare the same piece of paper okay so both of these are blue now i will touch one of these to this liquid yeah all right now now look at the papers this was the other half of the paper it's still blue but the one that touched this liquid has become red right 
right so litmus paper tells let's helps me know what happens to a paper when it touches an acid okay so a blue litmus paper upon touching an acid will become red in color like this so now i can tell that definitely what's in this beaker is an acid okay red litmus paper stays red after touching the acid because it's already red right so blue litmus to red is what indicates an acid apart from that i have two other indicators to help me out okay one of these is called methyl orange one of them is called phenolphthalein so we now that we know it's acid i want to show you what phenolphthalein or uh, methyl orange will do to acids okay how do we know which one's an acid and what it will show us this i need to be cautious careful if you see i'm using gloves because i can't spill any of these on my hand it's going to be really dangerous so i'll be taking this slight amount of methyl orange and pouring it into this little dish okay i hope we'll be able to see so just pour like i'll try to pour a drop of it right so if we can see i'm not sure if you can see but this liquid has become kind of like a reddish pink yeah so originally it is orange so if you can see the cap these droplets they are all orange and this liquid once it touches the acid it becomes red okay and the stronger the acid the darker the red is going to be so methyl orange upon touching an acid is going to change into a reddish color Okay so now we figured out how methyl orange works Finally we'll go to phenolphthalein I'll take phenolphthalein. All right. So phenolphthalein is here. It's a colorless liquid. It's pretty much pale. You can't really tell it has any color. I want to see what happens to phenolphthalein if I pour it in an acid. Right. Do you notice any color change? No, right. I'll pour some more just to be sure. So if you see, phenolphthalein is colorless normally. If I add it to an acid, it will still remain colorless. Okay, so that is how we indicate with phenolphthalein. If the color stays colorless, it means it is an acid. All right. So that is the end of this section. I'll just pour this back into this. I can watch that beautiful. pink color over here okay so now uh, we have figured out what are the three indicators that we'll use and how they work with acids right so now we'll proceed to the next one so if this is an acid this is a base because i know i put it over there so let's figure out how bases work okay So for a base, the litmus paper will do the exact opposite. Okay, so for an acid, blue litmus will become red, and the opposite is true for a base. The red litmus should become blue. Okay, um, just I think one very simple way I always used to remember it. We know the word acid as a strong, scary word, right? So uh, blue to red, getting angry. It's like an acid indication that's how i used to remember it might help you 
So this is a blue litmus, it's lightly red because of the acid around in the air. But now you see it's blue, as blue as blue can be, right? So a blue litmus paper upon touching a base is going to be blue, alright? Now let's do the same thing with a red paper. Here it goes, here's the red paper. I'll tear it in half again for comparing and you don't have to tear it in half but it definitely helps. Now I have touched it and if you see the change in color, alright? Red paper becomes blue. That is how I can identify it's a base, alright? Just use it fairly simple trick to remember. Uh, we can figure out how litmus papers work for bases and acids in the same manner. Finally, what I will do, I'll use the same two indicators that we did. We'll go with methyl orange first as usual. We saw that methyl orange turns reddish pink with an acid. So let's see if it changes its color with a base. Okay. Um, Alright, let's try to break it out real quick. And yes. Alright, so let's go with the base. I hope you can see. Just drop and done. Alright. So if you can see it is like a yellowish color. So with bases, methyl orange will give a yellow color okay it's a bit dark because there's too much indicator but that's the point okay so methyl orange with the base it becomes yellow in color which is also normally kind of orangish yellow in nature becomes yellow Finally, for the test, I will pour phenolphthalein directly in this conical flask containing my base. And now we'll see how does phenolphthalein react with the base. Okay, with acid, it stayed colorless. With the base, ooh, wow! Can you see that? Look at that. It's such a pretty color, right? So phenolphthalein is colorless naturally, but with the base it becomes pink. Right? If this is a proper pink, that is not pink, that is red. Okay, it just dilute so it looks like that. So this is the class for today, uh, to recap we saw two types of chemicals acids and bases and we understood how do I identify what is an acid and what is a base. So we are going to use indicators, three indicators we learned about pH paper, uh, sorry litmus paper, uh, methyl orange and phenolphthalein. Uh, we might see another thing called pH paper later on in the chapter. Uh, so for now just these three are enough as indicators. Thank you so much, have a good day.